Welcome back. In this week's second episode, I'm talking to Vivek Josef from Adidas in Germany about how he got started in sourcing, sourcing in Germany, and starting the sourcing team at Adidas. Welcome to episode 33 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. I started off by asking Vivek how he got into sourcing. So uh, I started back in like 2006. Um, and um, uh, I I was checking one of your shows and uh, there was a guy called Akberly Engineer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, similar to him, I would say I started as like a, um, you know, offshore recruiter uh, working from India and, um, you know, recruiting for um, contract positions or staffing roles in like US. Um, so um, having said that, you know, I pretended to be like, you know, when I talk to candidates, I used to tell them like I'm, I'm from US. So <laughs> putting up some accent and trying to, trying to make sure that they don't, uh, they don't find that I'm from India. So uh, yeah, that's how I started, uh, pretty much uh, from a staffing background. And, um, you know, the key uh, to be successful in that role is like, you know, you need to be really, really uh, fast in searches. So uh, I would say like, I started with like learning Boolean first, mm-hmm. and then we, we literally had a kind of, you know, a classroom training for Boolean. And um, then moving on to, you know, the, the, the practical job, I would say. So uh, that's how I started. Then uh, it was like a flow. So uh, pretty much like I changed three companies in three years, which is like mm-hmm. pretty common in India. <laughs> and, uh, uh, all the roles are pretty much, uh, were like pretty much in recruiting and also like offshore recruiter. Um, so uh, that, w- that was what I've been doing. And uh, I came to recruiting without knowing like, you know, uh, or sourcing without knowing like what exactly it is. I thought like it's all a part of like HR function. Um, then I was like, you know, uh, I was always told that uh, recruiting is like sales um, and um, sourcing is like, again, like it was not defined as sourcing. So you just do it as a part of recruiting, right? So that's how it used to be. And uh, doing it for three years. And after that, uh, I thought like I need to take a break and uh, do my MBA. Um, then I was looking like, you know, uh, for different options. And then, then I thought like, you know, why not to do, why not to come to Europe because I mm. have some experience in um, US market and worked in India. So um, know a bit about like, you know, uh, the Indian market as well. So that's how I came in. And um, I came to Germany uh, mm-hmm. because of my, one of my friends. So he was saying like, you know, let's go, let's do it together. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, never learned German. So uh, it was a kind of uh, totally a cultural shock when I arrived in Germany. And um, there was a time when we had the huge recession. So it was like till 2000, uh, I came in 2009 to Germany. Yeah. And, um, you know, till end of 2010, it was like uh, the deep recession that we were going through. So never managed to get a job, uh, never, uh, you know, didn't get a kind of internship. Um, then, um, you know, I was like applying to all the companies, including Adidas, mm-hmm. uh, but was not successful. Uh, finally, I got an opportunity with a company uh, called Triumph. Um, mm-hmm. They uh, manufacture the um, undergarments for, mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, it's a, it's a famous brand. Yeah. So uh, uh, that was in Munich. So I did an internship there. So it was more focusing on like HR uh, marketing and mm-hmm. recruiting. And uh, there I was like, I was doing a lot of employer branding stuff. So uh, one of the interesting stuff which I did was like, um, at that point of time, um, you know, I, I was working for the IT wing of, they had an in-house IT department. Okay. So I was working on um, supporting the recruiting function there. And, um, um, you know, I was, what I was doing more was like, you know, running a lot of campaigns, focusing on like employer branding, recruitment, marketing, and so on. Uh, one of the interesting projects, what, what we did is like, um, uh, Atos, uh, uh, the French, uh, you know, the IT giant, mm-hmm. so they were taking over like Siemens at that point of time. So what we literally did is like, you know, um, to, uh, uh, to, uh, put up the, banners in front of like Siemens information systems uh, <laughs> saying like, Hey, your next SAP career. I mean, like a, a kind of uh, model uh, lying down with the garments and so on. <laughs> so we just put up the huge banner in front of like Siemens ID solutions to attract talents. Uh, it worked to a great extent, <laughs> a lot of applications. <laughs> and um, then later on uh, my supervisor there. Um, so he, he found out that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a material for like uh, employer branding and uh, HR marketing. So because my passion was always towards sourcing. Yeah. Um, so uh, his name is Lars Brem and, um, you know, he found out that, you know, I have interest in that. 
and he gave me a Sing account because Sing is <laughs> Sing is king in Germany, right? So, yeah, so uh, I was um, looking more into Sing and um, literally looking for um, these people from Siemens ID Solutions to uh, to move to like you know uh, to bring them to uh, Triumph. Yeah. So uh, I I would say I was really successful there because uh, we got a lot of applications. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how much hires we had because I had to leave Triumph after six months. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were like still uh, people in process, and it's in Germany it takes a, uh, quite a while to to uh, you know run through the entire recruitment process. Yeah, normally. yeah, that's how I I came back into sourcing, and then again like picked it up from there from scratch. Uh, and uh, after six months, I didn't have any job. Then I was like working on my master thesis. And uh, thinking about like what to do next, and uh, what happened was like I was getting active in, on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and um, at that point of time there was a group called Boolean Strings uh, yeah. from still, uh, still there. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> not so active. <laughs> so I got into that, and um, you know Irina Shameva, she, so she's the one I think who founded it, and um, I was kind of, you know, checking into what, what people are doing. And I started like, you know, uh, putting up some, um, some answers for the questions and also raising some questions, trying to, you know, um, kickstart with sourcing again. Mm. And uh, that's where I met with uh, this guy from Hungary, uh, the famous sourcing guru, <laughs> Balash Parokse. So uh, Balash was like, um, he reached out to me on LinkedIn and he asked me like uh, whether I can, um, support him with a with a short term assignment for like one month mm -hmm. uh, in Cologne. So uh, um, you know he used to work with uh, Kelly uh, OCG, which is part of yeah. Kelly Services, the RPO uh, wing. And um, yeah, I said like, why not? And um, I just went there for like one month um, to as a kind of you know cover for a person mm -hmm. uh, was on like sabbatical. And um, then you know we picked it up. So. It was like totally new for me because sourcing in Germany without knowing German, that much of German, <laughs> really, really tough. So um, I started picking up with like, you know, channels like Sing. Um, I was looking for like, you know, uh, medical professionals. So uh, there, was, okay. there was a platform called DocCheck, um, ResearchGate, looking for like, you mm -hmm. know, uh, people with like PhD experience and so on. So uh, uh, trying to explore like a lot of, lot of channels and um, luckily I had like, you know, within one month I was able to make like two hires. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, the person who went for sabbatical, she came back and she resigned. So uh, that played in a bit favor for me. And, um, you know, I ended up with a job in Kelly OCG. Then it was like for the next uh, round, like three and a half years, I was uh, into the RPO world. Um, supporting major clients in Germany in IT, pharma, automotive, um, you know, using Sing, using LinkedIn, um, using Facebook, so different Twitter and so on. So that was kind of uh, a kind of, what do you say, a, a, I would say a kind of lab or a place where I could like, you know, uh, learn more yeah. about sourcing. And um, also working with Balash, great experience, I would say. I mean, like, you know, that guy, he, he really got me into track and sourcing. And, um, you know, we've been, uh, you know, we, uh, it, it, it was great for, for around like three and a half years to work with Kelly. And after that, um, you know, I also got a bit more into the networking mode. So uh, that's where I went to, uh, that's the time when the true events came to Germany. So I, I went there um, for the famous show by Bill Borman. And uh, uh, that was held by um, one of the competitors of Kelly uh, called uh, Puntun, which is a part of Adako Group. And um, uh, they were in a lot. So I met a lot of people, net did networking. And um, at that point of time, I also got an opportunity to be a track leader for uh, one, of the, one of the topics over there in true events. And that was a perfect uh, opportunity to network. And uh, um, you know, I could also meet a lot of people from uh, the industry. So later on, uh, that helped. Um, I wanted to make a move, and then I moved on to uh, Puntun um, around like six months later, and uh, again into sourcing. So um, you know, I was uh, supporting um, you know some uh, critical projects there again in the IT space. So uh, we had some uh, clients which were like you know doing projects in the government, uh, the public domain. 
which was really, really tough because um, they were looking for people who speak like proper German. So they want people who have who are really, really fluent or native speakers and in the ID space. And one of the locations which might, uh, which you might know is, um, you know, they had a project in Flensburg, which is near to Denmark. <laughs> A uh, really tough location is that it's, it's, it's a really it's in between nowhere. I would say <laughs> people are not exactly from there, so they gonna yeah. really have to be yeah convinced to go there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A, a small village with like you know I'm not <laughs> sure maybe hundreds of people. So <laughs> really tough to find uh, talents, and um, you know I was supporting that project. And uh, after that, um, you know uh, I've been like I've been I've been uh, more into like sourcing all the time. And uh, later on, I thought like, you know, again, it's time to change. And so I was, uh, you know, apply I used to apply for Adidas a lot previously. At some point of time, I thought like, you know, not getting there. So I should even remove my career profile. And uh, later on, uh, I saw an advertisement on LinkedIn from one of the, one of the recruiters. So uh, I kind of applied and didn't have much of hope, but um, you know, luckily I got an interview and uh, I kind of cleared it and then uh, got a job with Adidas. So it was pretty much into recruiting. So uh, um, yeah, that's a time where I thought like, you know, why not to shift to uh, the, uh, the other part and do more like uh, recruiting. So I was uh, supporting more of the IT function here in Adidas and it was not easy because, it, you know, when I started at Adidas, it was pretty much like we do the uh, 360 uh, uh, kind of, it was a 360 role starting from, doing the briefing with the hiring manager till like, you know, uh, rolling out the offer. And um, it was, it was really challenging, I would say, um, to recruit IT people. Yeah. Uh, and it's still challenging because, uh, you know, the location is not uh, the major attractive thing. So um, I had to it do- It could be worse, could be Flensburg. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Flens Flensburg, I would say. <laughs> so um, again, you know, with Adidas, uh, the good thing is that we have the luxury to look into more global, um, you know, markets. So it's yeah. not just like Germany. So uh, not just Sing, <laughs> uh, also like the other channels and so on. So, uh, um, yeah, tried a lot of different things and uh, supported the IT recruitment function for around like uh, um, two years. And after that, um, you know, we, we did a kind of uh, small experiment because there were no kind of sources at that point of time uh, in Adidas, no kind of dedicated sources, I would yeah. say. Um, so uh, we tried to hire two sources as an experiment and then try to see like how it works. And uh, it worked pretty well. So we tried it with IT. And, um, you know, then uh, later on, we thought like, why don't we spin off as a different separate function? Mm -hmm. And um, that's when it all started. And then the first person to raise raise hand was me, <laughs> and, <laughs> to to kind of you know uh, build up this function. And um, later on, kind of you know ended up uh, leading the EMEA sourcing team, research and sourcing team mm -hmm. uh, at Adidas. So we have uh, we have separated us like research and sourcing. Mm -hmm. So research is focusing more on like you know executive level roles mm -hmm. and. Uh, Sourcing is more focusing on like, you know, um, roles which are like um, uh, in, I would say like in the middle managerial level to, to um, so senior managerial level or like yeah. director level um, roles. And uh, apart from that, we also do a lot of like market intelligence, um, analyzing the labor markets. Um, so uh, we work on projects, say like, you know, if, if a team is, if uh, say like, you know, we had a, we were working on a couple of projects, uh, which was focusing on big data, mm -hmm. find out like where exactly these people are um, located, say like within Europe and uh, providing with suggestion, like, you know, uh, with the labor data, where we should target, what channels, um, you know, uh, what are, uh, what are the new things happening in the market with regards to that. So we also do a lot of market intelligence related things. And uh, we do a lot of uh, other stuff like, you know, um, uh, mass recruitment support. Yeah. Like uh, we call it like sourcing sprints, um, sourcing parties. <laughs> so, uh, we're tr trying a lot of different things. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really loving my job and I have a great team. So we all, you might have seen we also won the, in the hackathon in uh, Sosu. Germany. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah. What do you look for when you look for sources for your team? Adidas, um, you know, is a really good brand, a really great brand, right? Yeah. So uh, we have a luxury of 
attracting, I mean, like that helps us in attracting talent. So, uh, our database is like really huge, I would say. So uh, the first starting point for us is the career, um, you know, the portal. Um, um, and, um, you know, we search in the internal database and, uh, that's where the starting point for us, because we have a lot of, a lot of people who applied over these years and, um, you know, we have a huge database. So that's the starting point for us. And, um, after that, we definitely go on to like social media. So LinkedIn, uh, for sure. That's a huge, um, you know, uh, kind of, you know, platform and, uh, we have to agree that. And, um, also we look on Sing for sure. And uh, we just don't um, focus on these two channels. We also look into, I mean, like uh, recently we started working on projects from like China, Japan mm -hmm. and so on. So, um, you know, what we do is like, we look into Google, we look into like, um, uh, you know, try to identify uh, the, the data crease of professional data crees, for example. Yeah. Uh, we look into like meetups. We look into, uh, if it is IT, we look into like, uh, um, you know, GitHub, Stack Overflow, um, Twitter. So uh, let it be any channels. I mean, like whatever, whatever is there, we, we try to explore. And um, that's what we are looking into. But if you want, if you're asking me specifically for Germany, I would say like, um, you know, Sing is, uh, if you're looking for, uh, let, let me put it this way. So if you're looking for like typical German speakers, then Sing would be a really good channel. But the only thing is like, um the response that you get so um it might take a while so thing is not <laughs> nobody's like really really active there um maybe like what you have to do is like uh from my experience what i've seen is like you have to follow up with the conversation so mm -hmm. follow up with the uh, you know the the uh, the communication so um you might send an email today and if you just leave it like that you might not get a response you try doing it again then you might you might get a response. So Sing Sing is a good channel if you're looking for typical German speakers. Mm -hmm. Then what I've seen is like LinkedIn. Uh, it picked up really well. So I think Sing and LinkedIn is like a, uh, in a similar uh, kind of level when it comes mm -hmm. to the user base in the dark region, uh, the German speaking region. So uh, LinkedIn is also a good channel. And um, then within Germany, one good thing is that the the professional organizations, right? They are really strong. Um, so uh, you might have seen a, a presentation from Victor Sokoria. He was showing something about like the HR professionals um, yeah. and he was looking into, uh, I think it was SHRM, right? So um, so these kind of professional organizations are really, really strong in Germany. So that's, uh, you might find a kind of open directory. So you can find professionals or you can find uh, the leads from there. And uh, apart from that, Meetup is a really good platform. So uh, what I've observed is like, especially in like tech space, uh, a lot of meetups happening, um, like big data meetups yeah. and so on. So um, you can you can also leverage that platform. And um, um, I mean, like we've not invested much on like uh, you know the job uh, job boards or mm -hmm. uh, the data databases. But back from my RPO experience, we used to use like um, Stepstone. It was okay. I mean, like. Uh, um, it was uh, literally, I mean, like we were looking for salespeople and so on. Yeah. So uh, it was a good channel as well. But nowadays, I mean, like people are more social. So, um, you know, uh, Xing and LinkedIn would be the uh, the biggest source, I would say, for finding German speakers. Do you have any kind of tools or, or like sourcing stack that you're, that you're working with as a team? So my colleague from US, uh, Casey, he, he, I think you might know him. So he's, uh, he's the one who's like um, doing a lot of trials with the tools and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, having said that, I mean, like we have tools which are like uh, tools which works works in like you know specific region wouldn't work in the other one, right? Yeah. And especially in the phase that we are going on with GDPR, <laughs> so I'm, I have to be a bit careful on uh, using using tools which are extracting data. So I mean, like you know, we use um, uh, you know email identifiers for mm -hmm. sure, um, and again, trying to be more GDPR compliant. So high ritual contact out. Um, then uh, we also use things like uh, Nimuria, um, and um, you know, if you want to scrape some data, again, like um, not from European Union, maybe like outside of Europe, <laughs> trying to use like uh, data miner. It has been it has been a great tool. Uh, we have created some uh, recipes and also like uh, using the public recipes. So yeah. um, the good thing with my team is that I have a mix of um, you know. Uh, I have a really good mix of uh, people, uh, really good mix of sources. So I also have uh, one of my uh, 
uh, team member who is who is a programmer. Oh, so cool. she has, yeah, so she she helps in like you know um, uh, creating uh, custom search engine. So we have a, <laughs> we have built a custom search engine for um, finding designers and so on. Mm-hmm. So uh, her name is Jay, and she has been really really great in doing that. So um, yeah, so. Uh, I would say these are the tools which comes in my mind uh, when you ask me about what kind of uh, you know tools you use. Other than the language, what was the biggest change for you from you know sourcing for North America when you were back in you know both in India and RPO, and then very much that kind of you know having to look for people in Germany or, or sourcing in a German-speaking region? So the major challenge was like language. Mm-hmm. Um, it was not easy uh, because you know the thing with German. Uh, the German speaking uh, region is that, or uh, for example, like, you know, if you're looking for specifically for people with job titles, right? So um, you have to look um, with specific German words, which is not easy. Um, and also like uh, they have like, you know, uh, the gender specific titles mm-hmm. or manager, manager in. So um, if you don't use this, right? If you just use like manager then you're missing out like, you know, manager. Well, the females. <laughs> exactly, the females uh, to be precise. So uh, that has been a challenging part to understand and to, to understand the logic and uh, the titles and also to um, map things because um, when you see, um, uh, you know, in Germany, right, people are not used to um, writing um, kind of, you know, uh, six pages or seven pages of CVs. Mm. Uh, they keep it short. They keep it like one to two pages to the maximum. So that's what, uh, uh, that's totally different. That also reflects to the social profile. So that might not be kind of, you know, uh, that much, uh, you know, informative at times. So you need to really, really uh, read through things and uh, um, then make out and maybe like uh, cross verifying it with different, different, you know, profiles and then making sure that you're not missing out with people. So that has been the major challenge which I've been facing. Uh, but it was fun, I would say. And, and in terms of training, I mean, obviously, yeah, you had a lot of kind of training, both from, from working with, with Kelly. And where do you kind of go for, for, you know, what kind of training do you give to your own people? Or do you have, you know, specific things that you make everybody read? Or how do you kind of work with that as a team? So uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, my self-learning, again, like it's, um, uh, it's, it's uh, platforms which is available. So before I started with like LinkedIn, Boolean Strings has been a great group. Um, then uh, there was a group, group called Cool Free Recruiting Tools. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a cool one. And now it moved more onto Facebook, right? Yeah. So definitely, um, you know, SourceCon is a really, really great platform, which uh, I've been, um, you know, reading all the time and learning a lot of things. And um, also, um, I follow like uh, secret sourcing group, mm-hmm. sources who code, um, and also, um, you know, following, you know, the thought leaders like Dean Da Costa um, and, um, you know, Greg Hawks. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, uh, these are the names which I could point out and definitely a lot of learning a lot of things from uh, these different forums mm-hmm. uh, and also, um, you know, finding new groups and so on. So uh, that's what I've been I've been doing, and when it comes to um, you know my our team as a kind of group learning or whatever it is, so um, definitely we are built on like you know uh, learning or sharing is caring concept like what Jan Texier says. So uh, we realized it from from the beginning, and what we do is like we have an internal sourcing academy. Mm-hmm. We call it so. I mean, like I couldn't call it like internal sourcing academy, but it's like sourcing sessions that we that we do every two weeks and um you know one of my uh, one of my team members is taking care of that so her name is Verina. she's been doing a great job and like you know bringing in all the sourcers and um at adidas it's all about co-creation yeah. so we, we learn from each other's and um they do really cool stuff uh, with regards to the outreach so uh, i can give you an example like you know um, they were reaching out to, uh, we have a huge project in Spain and they were reaching, uh, this for I finding like software developers and it's like yeah. a really tough, a really small market. And, um, we're looking exclusively, exclusively in Spain. Mm-hmm. They were trying to use different, um, you know, kind of, uh, subject lines. Yeah. One of, one of them, which, uh, Verina was using is like, uh, what is your shoe size? That was a subject <laughs> line. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, like, they, it, it's again, like coming from learning from each other, each other's and, um, you know, so we keep on learning 
Um, and um, we have a really good sourcing community in Adidas at the moment. So um, we're trying to expand it. So we are trying to arrange, like, uh, uh, collaborate with uh, different companies in this region mm -hmm. and uh, to create, like, you know, kind of meetups and uh, learning, again, like extending it to, to the, to the um, external part yeah. of Adidas as well. So um, that's how we, we, we learn from each other. And, um, you know, if somebody comes across something, we share it. Uh, we have a deck and, uh, you know, we keep on sharing things and, uh, yeah, learning from each other, I would say. What does the German uh, sourcing community look like? Like, is there much of a community or is it more around the different kind of events and, and things like that that are coming up? One big uh, event is Sosu, for sure, mm -hmm. Sosu DE. Um, uh, really great and uh, uh, I really, really, I mean, like, I really love the organization and Phil has, do be, doing, be, Phil has been doing a great job with that to bring in uh, the sourcing gurus together and also the uh, companies in the, this region and, um, you know, sharing and learning from each other. Yeah. And apart from that, I think I've never been to this conference. It's called Social Recruiting Days. Mm -hmm. I've heard really good feedback about them as well. And apart from that, there are a lot of things happening regionally. Okay. So you see, like, Germany, right? Berlin is the place where a lot of meetups are happening. Yeah. And there are a lot of like, you know, um, sourcing labs or recruiting labs. So those kind of meetups happening. Um, when you come to more to like regions like south of Germany, uh, like Nuremberg or Munich, I'm not pretty much sure. So uh, for our region, we are trying to pioneer something new. So like, mm -hmm. you know, collaborating with uh, the employers in this region and uh, trying to do some meetups. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, like uh, out of, outside of Adidas, I, I don't think so. <laughs> there's anything existing here. That's for now. But the sources here in this region, we know each other. Yeah. At least that is a good thing. If people want to stay in touch with you and, and see what's going on and, you know, where, where your team goes, how can they, can they best do that? Be like? Yeah, I mean, like uh, LinkedIn, sure. Uh, Facebook, uh, for sure. And um, yeah, so, uh, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. What else I could think about? Sing, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Look, thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.